Um, I have a few Hope Squad friends that are waiting in the waiting room on the Zoom uh -huh. meeting, and they haven't been let in yet. Um, I think our administrator is doing that. Okay. If I could <laughs> let them in, I certainly would. All, All right. right. I see that there's, yeah, there's quite a bit, um, about 15 of them. So I'm hoping that he's right there watching and is going to let them in. Anybody else have anything besides the weather that made them smile this week? No? Well, you're going to have to start uh, participating, you know. <laughs> I had a um, lot of... Um senior friends and I'm a senior too who are hearing back from colleges so there's a lot of good news going around about that oh that's great anybody else um I I watch game shows with my family which I don't do a lot so well that's cool which game shows your favorite um beat shazam hosted by Will Smith oh that's great yeah and we watched The Amazing Race, too. Oh, yeah. I am I can sit down and watch that every now and then, too. One more. Does anybody else have any? I do. I finally got to take a nice walk in Johnson Hills Park. Awesome. Outside. Was it cold that day? A little bit, but I had my sweater on, so I was comfortable. Good. All right. I'm glad that you are all finding ways to smile in the middle of this. Our objectives for today are to understand what stress is and how to help others combat it, focus on the positive actions that people are taking, plan ways to uplift and give hope to peers, and share acts of hope with each other. And I already appreciate the um, smiles that you brought to um, some of our faces today. Oh, stress. Don't you love it? And I'm sure that there have been times um, in the last few weeks that you've experienced some stress. But as much as we hate to admit it, it's a normal part of our life. Stress can be external or it can um, be internal, but it's something we experience every day. Internal stress would be when you um, have surgery and your body is stressed from the inside out. It makes tired, it makes your muscles hurt, that's internal. External stress would be things physiologically. Um, it's somebody um, coming in a social situation and hugging you or um, yelling at you. It all depends because stress is a normal part of our life and it can be both positive or negative. All stress doesn't have to be negative, although we think of it in that way. Um, stop for a moment and think about a positive stressor that you might have experienced or somebody in your family might have experienced. Um, I can think of one, and that's um, the joy of having my children. When um, my sons were born, I was thrilled. It was a wonderful thing, and it brought great joy. But along with that, it brought some other stress factors of responsibility, sleepless nights, all of that. So it has both negative and positive connotations. What really matters is how we handle it and how we react to that stress. And some of us react in very simple and easy ways, and some of us react in very strong ways. And so, um, I want to talk a little bit about the levels of stress in our lives. First of all, you can see this reaction um, continuum to stress. Our re reaction to stress involves six different areas. The, the one side on the, what would be on my right, that's just kind of basic things you feel when stress comes into your life and um, shows positive reactions to it. You're feeling, you feel the stress right away, and then you feel some control over your emotions. You can still think clearly and remember as usual. You pretty well act like yourself, and it doesn't um, put you on the couch or cause you to faint. And there's not a lot of noticeable physical changes in your body. Um, yes, all of us have had an increased heart rate, and some of us had 
um, have had the, the breathing, but we learn and we know how to react to that. And so um, we usually stay on the right side of this chart. But on the left side in the pink area, you'll see in those six areas some things um, where people are holding on to what we call coccyx stress. And these people experience prolonged activation of these responses and have no protective relationship to help them frame how to handle it or what is happening. So this can lead to serious mental health issues to the point of suicide. So if you look at those and you take a look, shock, sorrow, anger, guilt, fear, and numbness. Um, and I'm sure that sometimes in your friendships and dealing with your peers, you can sense this. You're trained to look for those type of things. But that prolonged toxic stress can lead to some serious mental health issues. So just to give you an idea that today there might be some people out there experiencing on the left side or on the right side of this. But we're going to focus today on ways that we can spread hope and help support others to manage their stress during the situations that this wonderful COVID-19 has created. Although you, as a Hope Squad member, can eliminate the virus, can't eliminate this virus from our world, you, should sure, you can sure combat it with the, stre um, the stressors of it in a normal way of social isolation, or what we call our new normal, which is social isolation. Oftentimes in the midst of the crisis, we dwell on the negative aspects of our situation. And so COVID-19, I often think about, oh, another day inside or another day to be alone, um, not to have a lot of interaction with other people. I'm a people person. I love to be out and about doing things. And all of a sudden, um, things slowed down for me. And the worst part about this is none of us are sure when this isolation is going to end or how our lives will go back to a normal way of um, being and presenting and visiting and socializing with people. The only thing that I can say that has been constant to this whole thing is the fact that we have had to experience social isolation. And I do um, struggle with it, but I had to find some good in it as well. And one of the ways I did that was I'm not a real techie, as I told you, and I'm surprised my PowerPoint presentation hasn't yet um, fallen to the wayside or disappeared from the screen. But um, I am learning how to do Zoom, which has been really interesting. And I can't say it's been an easy process for me because sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm sure you all um, understand how technology works so much better than I but it's supposed to save me time. And a lot of times it takes me longer to learn it than it would to just call somebody. But my family is spread out all over um, the world basically. And so I was missing them and decided that I was gonna try to Zoom everybody. And what a wonderful experience it was. I found the good in using this kind of technology to connect with my family. We all got on um, line. Argentina didn't even um, disconnect my sister down there. So we were able to talk to each other for an hour and laugh and spend some time together, which had great meaning for us. And then there's also another way to find the good, and that's to look for the helpers in the world around you. And you might be one of those, but I'm sure that you've run into people that are also helpers. You see it on the television, you see it on the media. These people have taken a bad situation or a difficult situation and an unprecedented one and made it good and found good in the midst of it. And so that's what we want our Hope Squad members to do, to find good in the midst of this. So now I'm going to stop and give you a chance to share with us some of maybe the good things you've seen on the television that are occurring and happening and maybe the good things in your neighborhood, maybe the good things with you online with your friends or even helping students and your peers. 
So go ahead and chime in and give us some of those things that you have found to be good in the midst of all of this. There are um, a lot of very popular, um, popular like YouTube channels and stuff and yeah, um, who are like giving a lot of, well, they're trying to thank a lot of the people who are out and about um, as essential workers, like writing songs for them, raising like awareness for them and just a lot of smiles, which is very happy. That's great. Um, something that's been good in my neighborhood, um, our neighbor every day at 6 p.m., he comes outside and plugs the bagpipes, which is kind of interesting because my whole neighborhood oh. goes outside and like we stand away from each other, but we're still able to see each other and talk and stuff. And so that's been really nice. Cool. Yeah. Bagpipes. Hmm. Anybody else? Um, I like that um, a lot of companies and businesses have been um, reaching out to help uh, first responders and nurses um, by offering free donuts, free coffee, free food, 50% um, off gas. I saw, I think at BP. Um, so I just, I think that our community stepping up to take care of those um, people was amazing. So, and my sister is a registered nurse, so I kind of <laughs> have a little bias, but um, oh, that's just wonderful. To see, just to see the community stepping up to do um, things like that for, for those people who are essential, who are putting themselves, you know, in the middle of this health crisis. Someone else? One thing that I saw is that one of my friend's grandparents had a birthday and all of their uh, family got in their cars and did a parade in front of their house and wished them a happy birthday. That was, uh, that was definitely something that made me smile. And um, anybody seen the channel that, um, I can't ever pronounce the guy's name, but he does the good news on, I believe it's uh, Thursdays on YouTube. He's done three episodes. And it's all about good news, and it's something to watch if you haven't seen it. The guy from the office. Okay. Write that one down. Someone else? Um, there's a lot of um, improvements with nature. Like, our atmosphere is extremely healthy right now. And, like, I think pollution is down by 20%. Awesome. And people are actually acting like coronavirus, which is better than not acting on it. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Way to find the good. Anyone else? I, I noticed in classes, it's been easier to like reach out to other people and everyone's just been talking to each other more like virtually. And I think that's really nice because I've noticed like some people that wouldn't usually talk, like everyone's just kind of coming together. Anyone else? I am a school liaison for Grants is Hope, and I'm going to give a huge shout out to anyone and everyone that is using their social media because the absolute joy of my day is following all of you on Instagram and Twitter because you guys are rock stars at it. So thank you. One more. Does anybody have one good thing they want to share before we go on? Urban High School has been, our Hope Squad has been increasing presence on social media. So we've been doing a couple of virtual Hope Weeks and just getting our presence out. And today we actually planned out some things that we're going to do. Like we're going to highlight a Hope Squad member a day so that the student body of Turpin knows who we are how they can reach us. And we're also going to team up with Anderson to do a virtual Hope Week. And that's something that would be a great thing so that we can bring Anderson and Turpin and our Forest Hill School District together. Awesome. Actually, you should put that in the chat box so that other schools can, and other Hope Squad members can look at that and maybe um, take that as an idea. Great job. I'm sure there's a lot more out there, but um, let me move on. One of the things that you do need to do as you are spreading hope from home is to make sure you watch for signs of crisis. 
Watch for those posts and comments that raise a red flag for um, the students that might seem anxious or depressed or um, even suicidal um, thoughts and ideation. I would encourage you to reach out to them through messages and offer a listening ear. And boy, if that person's in immediate danger, um, tell your parents, call 911. I know that as Hope Squad members, you have been trained what to do. And we have seen Hope Squad members put that into effect right away. So I'm just trying to remind you about watching for those signs. Um, I do believe that a lot of our, most of all our Hope Squad members have been trained so well by um, their advisors. And I just wanna encourage you to keep up that good work. And then be sure you have a referral plan ready to go. I know that this might be repetitive to you, but when you're at home for as long as you have been, and you and know as well as I do how um, teenagers' rooms can look, if you're not a neat freak, you probably have piles of clothes around, food, anything. It's just not a normal existence right now. So be sure you take that referral plan, make it, Get a list of trusted adults on there whom you're able to contact for assistance and help. And then also um, make a quick list of what you are to do um, or remind yourself of those skills and things that you need to do um, to help this person and um, keep it in a safe place. It's not under the pile of clothes in your room, not under your bed, not in the covers or, or wherever you go. I know for me, I have to put it in a safe place that I can remember because every time I find a safe place, it changes. So, um, or I forget. So I'm just letting you know those clues in. Be sure that you look for, you have your referral plan in a good place to grab at a moment's notice when you need it. Another way you can spread some hope from home is to reach out to others. Please know the technology savvy thing that I did and had all of these pictures fly in um, to the screen at one time. But if you ask me how to operate Skype real well and um, can I maneuver through the iPhone with the same intensity and pace that um, high schoolers do, no. But I do know that this is a great way to do that. The one thing that I would encourage you to do, and we've talked about this at Granite's Hope, is to do face-to-face -face talking instead of just on the um, cell phone or just through a text message or an email, because that personal contact is so important at times like this. And so I want to encourage you to reach out and if you called somebody, make a FaceTime call. If you um, haven't experimented with Zoom, you know, you can sign up and get it for um, 30 minutes of time and Zoom with a group of people. Skype, um, the other two is if you've got family members that you can do some things with and you can reach out to them in that way. Um, I'm sure that your grandma, your aunts, your uncles, even your cousins, I've even found myself during this time reconnecting with some of my relatives that I haven't talked to in a long time. So I want you to encourage you to reach out to others. And I want to really encourage you to reach out to your peers. Um, people that you might have known at school that um, were lonely, even before this all occurred. It would be a good time to find them, to look for them, especially out online. Even with other Hope Squad members, ask one another, who can I encourage? Who can we bring in to a group and talk with them? Can we um, send them messages in a week? Can we talk to them in some way that will encourage them and make them see that during this isolated period of time, there's still support around and surrounding them. Oh. The other is share your hope. Hope's contagious, folks. Tell your friends and family what made you smile and have them smile back. I can't imagine telling my little brother um, about something that really made me smile today. He'd think I was crazy, but it would be so fun to watch his reaction. His reaction alone would make me smile. So 
look for those moments of hope, things that have brought meaning to you or joy. It just doesn't have to be a thing, but it can be a relationship, a comment someone made, a note someone wrote. Um, the actions that would help other people smile, that would encourage them and make them feel like they're not alone. Um, another good way of um, sharing those hopeful moments is to connect with people that you've done things with and maybe talk back through a funny occasion or something, a moment that you shared with one another or something that made you laugh together. And it can even be um, something from your past that happened at school when you were in third grade. But if you um, make those moments occur, be sure you share them with people so that they can enjoy the stories because it's a really a contagious thing, hope. And now I want you again to get on and talk about some moments of hope you have been experienced lately. How maybe somebody encouraged you, how you encouraged someone, how maybe you even helped the person out of a really bad state of mind and talked with them, um, or that they have shared things with you um, about joy at home that made them smile and feel like they were building a better relationship with someone else. So I'm going to stop talking and let you go to town. Um, my friend, she was really struggling with this whole situation. And she would like text me talking about how she was having a lot of trouble. So I got her to talk to her mom. And now she like video FaceTimes with her um, therapist. And she's like super happy now. So I'm very like... I'm happy that I got one of my friends some help and that she's okay now. That's wonderful. Work of the Hope Squad. Thank you. One of my friends, um, like right before the whole like closing happened, like things, school was closed, but like the stores weren't closed. She confided in me that she was starting to struggle and beginning to relapse again. She struggled like with depression and had attempted suicide before. And so I went to Target and like got her some things. But what I did, I like focus on, I got her like a little trinket. It was like a little Hot Wheels car. And so I wrote a note saying like, if you're ever feeling alone, like look at this, like I'm always here. I'm always a call away. Like, even though I can't see you at school anymore, like I'm right here, like just call me, you know? So I think she really appreciated it and she's been doing better now. I had a friend who actually another one of my friends texted me and she said, hey, um, so this girl is struggling. She texted me, I don't really know how to handle her. Your, you work your hope squad magic. You, um, t and I like worked her through how to do it. So because like, if you have multiple people telling you to do, go like go to the counselor and stuff, that it's like a bigger influence. And so um, then I texted her and asked her like, hey, how are you doing? And she told me about how she was depressed and everything. And I sent her this motivational, like these several motivational videos about how wonderful she is and how there is hope. And then she texted me and, and she's been afraid for a while to tell her parents about it because she's scared that they'll take away privileges from her and everything. Like they'll take away her friendship. They'll take away her ability to go to school and her communication devices. But she told her mom finally, and it was the best reaction ever because she said that she's going to help her out and help her get better. And I'm just really proud of my friend because she's been struggling with this for a while now. Getting better now. More moments of hope? Um, I think it's really cool how you mentioned like sharing some funny memories. I uh, had found some videos from when I was in eighth grade in a media production class and they were pretty silly and I shared them with a friend and we had a really good laugh over it. So that was really great. Good. <laughs> You're brave to show videos from middle school. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Anyone else? I love these. Um, so, oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> um, this like, like shut down I guess has like allowed me some time to like really focus on myself and what I want to do because during like when we had school I would be so busy it would be just hard to 
manage things. So now I've had like time to focus on myself, which is really nice. That's wonderful. Self-care is so important. And look at you, you use this time valuably. Good job. So my church camp like recently got canceled because of the coronavirus and everything. And we were all like super discouraged about it uh, because we always seem to connect well and everything. But we've actually been uh, like coming together more weekly on Zoom and then we've actually connected a lot more than like we would with just one week of camp. So it's kind of been uplifting. That's awesome. Anyone else? I love these. They're fun to share and it's great to hear what you're all out there doing. I have this friend who um, he struggles with depression and um, it's getting to a point <clears throat> since he hasn't had like any personal contact with anybody, he's kind of like uh, in this dark place. So whenever he needs help, he'll come to me and I'll give him some things that I do. Like for example, I like to write down how I feel just to kind of um, get it down and it's not like in my head. So I told him that he could write things down. Going for a walk um, kind of helps too, just to kind of get that all off your brain. So I've been giving him uh, small things of advice um, to help him get through it. Great job. We've got time for one more. We had a friend of the family who had their um, dad pass away. The f dad and the family passed away uh, a few months ago. And the daughter had her um, birthday. And they couldn't get out to do much. And they didn't want to leave the house. So my daughter and I, we went and uh, bought a ice cream cake and dropped it off at their front porch and uh, made sure that they had a uh, good birthday for that one. Wonderful. They're so meaningful and they seem so small sometimes to us, but they have so much um, hope and joy for those that receive that gift. So finding the good and sharing it, thank you so much for doing that. And make sure you put some more in that chat room because I'll go back and read them. I love to see what our Hope Squads are out there doing. Okay, now here's a good one. Use your virtual world to spread hope. Now this is such an interesting um, idea. You know so much more about this than I do, um, but you can use your knowledge of technology in the virtual world to stay connected with others. This is an awesome opportunity. Even some of you had shared that you found different ways of communicating. And I don't think I'll ever change the way I communicate now with my family because of Zoom. And I can um, experiment with that. But there's so many ways of reaching people. And so I'm just going to give you a few to think about. Um, I'm sure that maybe you've even tried some of these. Like host a virtual party with all your friends and maybe include some that are struggling, have a party and do it online. It would be interesting to do it with some of your Hope Squad members to get together maybe one time in a week and share what you're learning, what you're um, going through, how you've encouraged other people and the joys and the blessings of being a Hope Squad member. But a virtual party would be a pretty good idea Nobody has to go anywhere, but you can play music. Like, if you want, you can even have pizza delivered to somebody's house and have fun doing that. You know, you can even share movie screens, and there's all sorts of um, games online you can play. I found out the other day that Netflix has a party um, um address and a website and what's the other one it, there was another one party I think in a bag or something that you could grab and do um, you can play oh Pictionary all sorts of things online and you're the adventurers you're the risk takers to go out there and find them but invite some of those students that are feeling really lonely and say hey join us for a Scrabble party or a Pictionary party and see what happens another would be to host a virtual pen pal site now this is a really interesting idea. 
you find people who want to be connected and you pair them up with someone else that might want to be connected or even with another Hope Squad member. And for a week, you you write back and forth, you text, you can um, email, do whatever works best for you, or even call each other, but have some questions for them, some icebreaker questions, like um, what would you do if we could only write with crayons? What would, what would the world be like if crayons were the only thing you could write a letter with or whatever? And ask some crazy questions and then, um, trim it down and hone it down to questions that are more meaningful, like about your feelings. What do you think about the COVID-19 as it relates to your family? What do you think about as it relates to school? What has it changed in your life? There's all sorts of things you could do. And at the end of the week, have that, if the person still wants to be a pen pal, with that person, keep them there. If not, switch the pen pals up again. But you could do a really cool site that way and get to know each other. Um, but those were some of the ideas we have for the virtual world, but I am sure that you're already using a lot of them. Another is how are you doing at home? Because that is the toughest place sometimes to be patient and kind. And you'll see that some of our homes are all smiles and our brothers and sisters love us and they want to play games with us they want to be with us and then the next day it's totally different and everybody's crying things are falling apart and dinner doesn't taste good there's nothing in the house to eat you're just wanting to be with different people so it takes a lot of patience to spread hope at home because that's the place where you really live and really reveal your true self. So um, there's lots of ways that you can do this. And I was thinking about some of these and we've taken a look at a few, but I wanna talk to you about some of the ideas that you can do at home. Acts of kindness. Imagine that you declare one day in your home an act of kindness day and that you ask everybody to contribute in some way to acts of kindness for the whole day. You can even have a big um, cake at the end of the day to celebrate whoever um, did the best acts of kindness or how meaningful they were. Do coupon deliveries. You know, I often laugh because my sons, when they were little, used to give me these coupon books, like I'll take the garbage out without complaining. Um, Mom, I'll make sure that I bring my wash down to the um, washroom, that type of stuff. What a great idea to do that with your family, for your mom, your dad, um, your sisters, your brothers, your whoever is living with you and around you, um, surrounding you in this period of isolation. Find some ways to do a, co a coupon delivery book for each of them and then um, Make sure you carry through on those coupons. Party in a box. This is so fun. I do this with my granddaughters. When I go to visit them, I show up with a box and or a bag of things. And in there are games, our learning activities, things that I can do with them that they love to do. So if you have younger brothers and sisters, this is a great way um, to get them engaged and you celebrate and create a party with them in a box and they open it up and then you do all the activities in there with them. Older brothers and sisters, believe it or not, like this as well because the party in the box will change from young siblings to middle school and high school siblings. What would you like to get for a party in a box? And do that um, with some of your brothers and sisters or family members and see what happens. Another is, what do you think? You sit down at um, your dinner table and you have questions that everybody has to answer. You don't have to do it at meals, you can do it after. And they can be some crazy questions, they can be some serious questions, but everybody has to come up with an answer and to share that. Um, what makes you laugh, what doesn't make you laugh. Uh, you can even do a, who do you think had the funniest joke tonight? Um, there's all things of, um, all sorts of things you can do with that, what do you think? The other is take mom out for dinner. 
Now I know you're saying to me, ah, uh, they, all the restaurants are closed, but you know what? I'm a mom and I would have loved for one of my sons to have said, hey mom, you and I are gonna go out for dinner tonight. I'm gonna take you in the study room and we, at you, that you and me are gonna have a candlelit dinner together. And I wanna talk to you and um, I wanna know how you're doing and I want you to know how I'm doing. That would be so meaningful. And you could have dinner delivered or you could even make it for your mom or your dad. You could do this with your sisters and brothers too. But you go somewhere else in the house and just have your own private little dinner um, and be able to spend some, some really quality time just with one person um, in your family. And I would say just because I have boys, do it with your mom first and see how it works. Another is a family Olympics. You should try to set up something in the house um, or even outside that you can do where everybody has to participate. Young kids love competition and most of us enjoy participating with others. So set up a family, family Olympics with your crew and see how that goes. Um, just do it on a day when everybody's not so tired and grouchy. And I would advise you to not find really um, hard competitive games if you're um, real competitive people and it goes into arguments find some crazy kind of things to do like um who can blow up this balloon and shoot it across a room the furthest or how many jelly beans can you get across the room with a straw in five minutes but um, fun games too that kids would um, enjoy and like and you don't have to have a lot of high skill um, to do them. Why am I saying that? Because I was one of those people that it was always picked last um, on the teams that were very competitive. And so th those are just some of the ideas that you as Hope Squad members could do at home to cheer up your family, to enjoy them and participate with them now that you've been in the house with them for um, four weeks. I love when um, one of you said, hey, I've gotten to know my siblings better. And um, that has been a real joy, watch a movie together. Um, I would just really encourage you to try that party in a box and take mom home um, out for dinner. Um, I think those would be a real fit with your family. Now it's your turn. Give us some things that you've done at home in a virtual way um, or even at home with just your family or virtually. Um, ways that you have spread hope while you've been at home during this time. Um, my friends, we all made Kahoot games about ourselves, and then we <laughs> got on a Zoom call and screen shared, and we all played each other's Kahoots. Awesome! That's great! I, I love highly it. recommend it. It was very fun. <laughs> <laughs> my entire family goes out on the trampoline like three times a day, and my mom's really competitive, and it's really funny sometimes because she laughs right after she's like, oh, yeah, makes funny noises, and we all are super happy after that. Awesome. Me and my friends, we, we got on a FaceTime call, and we played Uno, just catch up. I love it. Anyone else? Oh, come on. I know you've done a lot of stuff. So my sister's gotten into like crochet needling, so she's been doing that while I've been painting. That's great. Crafts are awesome. Now that's fun. My family and I, we all um, pick a picture that we want to draw, and then we'll all sit around and try to draw the same picture. And it's really fun to see everyone's like different interpretations. <laughs> Great family game. That would be really interesting, especially if you have a lot of different age groups in your family. Anyone else? I've been my mom. My mom and I, uh, we've been baking a lot. Um, we've made like brownies and like different types of like man bread. And so that's a really fun thing to do. That's awesome. All those new recipes. And even doing it with the old ones, that's great. What great memories you're making. Other ones? 
So I'm in theater at Anderson, and our whole group, we obviously can't do our production anymore. And so what we're doing is we're doing an online version where we're all recording different uh, angles and we're setting up green screens in our houses. So we're gonna edit, I'm gonna help edit the video all together and then we're gonna actually have a video of the production for later, which it's, it's gonna be weird and it's not gonna be up to our normal standards, but we're doing the best of what we can. That's oh, really that cool. Is, that it is was, a great way to use that virtual world. I love it. We were supposed to have our opening night tonight, so we're doing like a virtual green room. Good. Do you, will you do it on Zoom? How will you do that? Will yeah, a lot of people on Zoom. Good. So people will be able to attend and watch. How cool is that? Anyone else? My family, have I, I'm not sure if I already mentioned this. We've been doing virtual game nights and we basically just get, get on and chat. We play Jackbox games. We can interact with one another. It's a fun way to just kind of get on, escape the world and just release some stress and we just love getting to check to check in with each other and be around each other. So who is um what's your favorite game? Um favorite game. So we've been using what's called what are called Jackbox party packs. Uh-huh. And I mentioned that which I mentioned in the chat. And there's this game called Draw Drawful 2 which is basically where you draw a picture on your computer and then uh, everyone has to state what their interpretation is of it. <laughs> okay. Great. It's brought some hilarious um, <laughs> reactions. Good job. Some more. This is so fun listening. Uh, I know um, my family and I, we've had like chop nights and like, um, cupcake wars where we just like create like new inventions for food and then we just like kind of compete so like my brother is always a judge and he like tastes all the food and says cake he liked the best um it, it's always chocolate anything chocolate related he is all into it good job i love it anyone else I have this app, it's Talk Party. It's kind of like a FaceTiming app. Um, there's games that you can play on it. Me and my friends have been getting together and we've been playing like some of the Pictionary games. And it's kind of really funny because it's hard to draw with the, on the phone. So it's kind of, it's so fun. That would be interesting to see some of the pictures you come up with on your phone. That's great. Anyone else? Okay, well, I have to say, I am so encouraged by your ideas and the way that you are spreading hope from home and how diligent you have been with that. What I wanna encourage you to do this week is to try maybe some of the ideas that have come up on chat room, even some that you might've gotten in um, this video and mod module, and at least try to spread hope one time this week, something new, so that you're not getting bored with it all, but a way to reach out and to share that message of hope. I know Hope Squad members also need to make sure that you're taking care of yourself and spending some time to regroup and to um, find ways to bring some joy and happiness even to you. If it means you recoup in silence and watch a movie, great. If you are filming, doing all sorts of things, but I would encourage you to take care of yourself as well. And advisors, those of you that are online, I want to thank you for the great job that you are doing with these Hope Squad members. They're right on it. And I've um, also been out on Twitter, and I love to see what you're doing. I'm, I'm amazed and impressed with the maturity and the fun and the hope that they are spreading, but more so their passion and um, love for other students and concerns. 
It has meant a lot to me, even in coming as to be part of this organization. And students, I know that you know this, but you can't do this program without you being in it and being dedicated to the cause of helping your peers and bringing mental health awareness to the front of your lives and to talk about it openly. And I thank you for that. And I just want to encourage you to reach out to any of us if you would like to. Um, and I just wanna take this moment to turn it over to Lisa because she's been in our chat room and I wanna know if there's any questions that students might have asked that we might be able to answer before I kick off and say goodnight. Uh, no, there have been no questions, but there have been some great comments about things that people are doing, you know, with their friends and with their family and things of that nature. So, um, share some, Lisa, share some. Well, they've all been reading them, I'm sure. But, um, like, like Sammy talked about, she wasn't able to go to a bridal shower, so they did it virtually, um, oh. which I think is a great idea. Um, Sophia shared a site called Scribble, and it's like a Pictionary game. Um, house party, somebody talked about. I put that one up. Yeah. Um, yep. um, doing Zumba and yoga with friends, um, you know, virtually would, is something that somebody talked about. I love this one. Um, Mia talked about that her family plays Foursquare every night. I think that's awesome. Since I live by myself, it would be kind of hard for me to do, but I could give it a whirl. Um, <laughs> Lots of uh, people are trying, you know, cooking different things, and 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 somebody was said that um, each person in the family is cooking it at a different night, and the brother's food is not so hot, but it is edible, so no one is starving in that house. So that's a good thing. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm I'm gonna put Miss Urban on the spot for a second because I know she's in here. Miss um, Urban, just with you know, just kind of give the rest of the folks a sense of what's been happening with your Hope Squad in the last couple of weeks. Are you still here? I'm unmuting myself, Lisa. You're in trouble. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so uh, my Hub Squad at Princeton Community Middle School, um, I've just been very proud of the kids because we've had two um, very uh, significant crises with other students at Princeton. And um, it was funny because right before this happened, we finally got our video out where the other kids would know who we were and what we did and how to contact them. And it seems like the protocol was followed pretty well where another student reached out to a Hope Squad student about a friend. So it was like one of those things, but the long story short was um, the student actually uh, made an attempt and we were able to get the police there and the squad and the child is fine. So. Kids save the life, yay! So it works, you know, it really does work. Scary, but it works. Yes, that's what it's all about. And we do thank you for your work, all of you. And I'm gonna say goodbye right now and wish you hey, all Jenna? the best. Yes, are you on there, Keith? Can I, Good. Can I, can I share yes. two things real quick? Um, first right off, uh, thanks everybody for being online today. Um, next week's session is uh, titled Love is Respect. It's about dating violence. And uh, Susanna Davis, who's the principal at Lakota East and used to be the health teacher there, is going to be sharing that presentation. So my challenge to everybody that's on the call today is to invite and have two of your Hope Squad friends uh, join us so that we can uh, hit about 150 participants next week. That would be awesome. Um, the other thing would be if you didn't sign in in the chat room, uh, just give us your first and last name. Please do that before you sign out so we know who was with us today. Um, and there'll be a recording. Um, I think we're going to post the recording of today's session and all the sessions that are coming up. We're going to post that um, on our website at grantushope.org as well. So thanks, Jenny. I'll turn it back to you. Yes. And all of you have a great week. And we'll look forward to hearing from you all next week on Thursday at 3. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Everyone have a good week. You too. <laughs> you too. You too. Lisa? Yep. How many did we have? Uh, like 57.
Whoa, that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for all your help. I appreciate uh -huh. it. My pleasure. Um, and, and as long as Keith keeps us open and then he can print out the chat box and get all the names. Most yeah. people, I think most people signed in, so that's good. Give me how just a second here. How yeah. come there were so many in the more box? Say, say what? There were 99 in the more box. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't even know what the more, oh, you mean? The more box at the bottom. I, according to the participant thing, we had 57. So I'm not really, that's I don't know. Great. I think that's wonderful. And there could have been people that logged in that there's something called a non-participant. I don't really know what that means. If they called in from their phone, I'm not really sure. So I don't know if that's what the 99 yeah, meant or not. Right now it's just us in here, so we're good. Yeah, um, well, it, and Jenny, I thought that you, you did great. I okay. thought that was fabulous. It was the first attempt out there of getting it out in front of everybody. I'm, I'm glad it was you. I was not If I did not have you and Lisa standing beside me this whole time, I think I would have looked right in the screen. <laughs> well, I don't know that I did anything other than cross off names, but uh, yeah, no. I, I, but I learned some things too. I assume when I hit uh, admit all, or there's a button that says you know let everybody in. I assumed when I hit that, that was. It. it would continue to add people and it didn't it stop to that point and then we got a backlog yeah it's literally like more, being the just less and more. The door and opening the door and then closing it and then you hit yeah. the button again yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 and we got them all in i thought you know we, we did Good. fine but uh yeah well, now, i um, thought now the I'm gonna have feedback to... and then participation was great uh good yeah. some good examples good questions um how close was that to what Greg had sent us as an outline structure? It was. How much did you add to it? I, I um, I took his main themes. I added to it the stress okay. part. I found from Don's stuff, which was good. Um, but the yeah. um, most of it I used. I just didn't like his slides that much. Yeah. No. Um, I mean, I think that's fine. I think it's about the ideas and the concepts and mm -hmm. getting kids to share and interact and all that good stuff, which is they're doing you know, some what we wonderful. Want to to do. They're doing wonderful stuff out there. 